Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with this project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled ArmorTech early production German Tiger 1. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the rear hull area and we'll be going over all of these details and mods that went into this portion of the vehicle in this video. Starting with first the tank smoke system. The smoke system you see here is the ArmorTech kit supplied unit. This system here dates back to 2012 and I have used this system on several builds which have been posted on the ECA channel. This system here is definitely a lot more improved compared to the first generation unit which was discussed in more detail in the last Tiger 1 build video in which that one did utilize the original Gen 1 unit. Now all of the units here are spread on the table and are ready for assembly. However, right before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and take the steel base plate as well as the two CNC aluminum housings and get them into a coat of primer. After that, they will be fully assembled. And here's the unit now fully assembled and ready for installation to the model. As the build progresses, this will be fitted to the vehicle and the wiring will also be sorted out and the appropriate connections will be made at that time. More information about this is to follow in upcoming videos. Now as for the external exhaust manifold detailing, all of those components are stretched out on the table in front of you. What you see here is what ArmorTech supplies you with the kit. The reason why this is the next area of focus is that due to the interior portion detailing of the engine compartment, these fittings really need to be installed before the addition of the other details which are going to be going into this section of the model. The parts that you see here are, have basically stayed the same throughout the ArmorTech Tiger 1 releases throughout the years and are very similar to the ones used on the first generation ArmorTech Tiger 1s which came out around 2002. What has changed since that first generation kit is that of the medium which the parts are made in as ArmorTech has improved their tooling to output the parts that you see on the table here. Now many of the components here are actually left unchanged from the original ArmorTech releases and are completely interchangeable between the two. This is also true for the other components that have been retooled. Even though they have been retooled, the specs and measurements are very similar, if not the same, and the pieces can be switched cross-platform. Starting from left to right takes us to first the exhaust manifold stacks. I'll open up the protective bag that they're stored in. The exhaust manifolds are comprised of CNC aluminum that are hollow and are comprised of two or three pieces. The original ArmorTech piece had a design very similar to this, but rather than being made of CNC aluminum, the pieces were actually made of casted white metal alloy. Moving from the stack takes us to these two steel discs. The steel discs are laser cut and are intended to be used to close off the bottom portions of the exhaust manifolds. These are exactly the same from the original ArmorTech batch. Also the same is that of the two brass fittings. The purpose of these brass fittings is this is how the exhaust manifold actually threads and mounts to the rear portion of the Tiger 1's hull. If we notice there's a small little protrusion on this end, this is for that of a rubber tube to connect to that of the tank's smoke system. Moving from the fitting, another component that is directly carried over from the other earlier batches is that of the metal heat shields. The heat shields you see here are pressed stamped sheet metal. They have their holes already in place for that of the mounting fasteners and are very nicely done. There is a left and a right hand heat shield and are both are pre-pressed and ready to go. Moving from the heat shields takes us to the threaded rods. These are intended for that of the rain cover cap which gets fitted over the exhaust manifolds. The cover caps are right over here. These are made from CNC or I should say laser cut steel and are pre-preferated. These are also exactly left untouched from generation one of the ArmorTech Tiger. This is a newer tooling piece. This here is a small little spacer which gets fitted to that of the exhaust stack. 
this was not present on the earlier versions as on the early first generation cast units this section here was integrally molded into the piece now it's a separate aluminum turning that needs to be affixed with adhesives finally takes us to the exhaust armored covers the exhaust armored covers you have two pieces and they are exactly the same these pieces here are made from CNC aluminum they are very nicely done and have a nice shape to them these pieces will receive some minor tweaks and minor details which of course I'll be showing in the future and in the next scene and here are all the exhaust manifold components now fully modded and ready for primer paint weathering and then installation to the model starting with the heat shields the heat shields the only mods that I made to them was that of the addition of the two crimp lines that are found on the top and bottom portion of these heat shields these are absent on the armor tech metal form and are simply added with two strips of plastruct half round stock it's a simple addition and once made really helps the piece shine compared to leaving it without the crimp lines. Moving our way to the exhaust manifolds themselves, they have been assembled with all the kit components. The only addition that I made was that of the puffer cap detailing. The puffer cap detailing is absent on the Armor Tech component and the set that you see here is a resin set which is found on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. Simply gets assembled and mounted to the stock Armor Tech piece. This is true for both exhaust manifolds. Moving from the exhaust stacks takes us to the armor covers. Now, like what I showcased earlier, the armor covers were made from a single piece of CNC aluminum and have a nice shape to them, which gives a nice base to start with the mods and the details. Of all the components for the exhaust manifold, the armor covers did receive the most amount of reworking. Starting with first the corners, as you see, they have been rounded off and they originally squared off on the stock armor tech piece. In addition to that, you'll notice that the entire piece is covered with that of rough cast texturing. On the real German tanks, these pieces would have been casted in metal. Now, the Armor Tech piece is nice and CNC machined, and to give it that extra bit of cast texturing really helps the piece compared to leaving it with its stock texture or textureless appearance. It's also important to point out that the German castings were actually quite rough in comparison to such countries as the United States or even Great Britain, which had a lot better tooling for that of casting. The Germans and also the Russians did feature some very rough castings when they were used. As for the other mods that were made, you'll notice I went ahead and added divots on the sides here. The divots that you see here are that for the wells for that of the fasteners which will be used to mount this component to the tank. You'll also see a notch which has been milled into the lower portion here of the exhaust cover. This is an exact image on the, op of, on the reverse exhaust cover itself. As for the reason for this little cut in here, the reason for that has to do with both removal and mounting of this component. Due to the sheer weight of these pieces, getting them to index onto the six fasteners which are found on the rear of the tank and getting them to lock in, it can be very difficult due to the weight. The purpose of this lug here, or I should say this recess here, is for the insertion of a crowbar in order to pry the piece loose to help aid with the removal or installation of this heavy component. Moving from the cut takes us to the lug. The lug that you see here is not part of the Armor Tech set and is from EastCoastArmory.com. They're made from turned steel and get mounted to any 1-6 scale Tiger 1 exhaust cover from the ECA resin sets to the Armor Tech metal ones. On the real piece, like I said before, with the with the cutout, due to the weight of this piece, it cannot simply be held up by a person, and this is actually suspended with that of a crane. The two cables would lock into these sections here, and the crane could hoist and lower the exhaust cover to the location where it needs to go. By adding these details really greatly helps improve the, the overall appearance of this piece. And here are all of the exhaust components now fully 
painted, weathered, and are ready for installation. Well, except for these two. These two are for another smaller scale Tiger One project, which will hopefully be finished shortly after the release of this video. As for the 1-6 scale components that are on the table, here we have the exhaust manifold. As you can see, they have their full set of rust and soot detailing. As for the technique, it's the same technique that I've utilized on the other 1-6 scale builds that are found on my channel. The exhaust armor covers have also have their weathering applied at this point here. Now the reason why they have their weathering at this point here is because once they are fully installed to the vehicle, when the heat shields go on, it's going to cover up the exhaust covers. So getting access to them is going to be very difficult, not impossible. That's why it's always at this point here on the build, on a Tiger 1 specifically, that I go ahead and apply the weathering to these pieces. Same can also be said about the heat shields themselves. Now, when it comes to the heat shields, at this point of the build, I only weather up the inside portion of the shield, and the outsides, I just leave with the base coat. The reason for this is, again, once bolted to the tank, this is not going to be accessible, and will actually be fully masked up during the final completion part of the model, in which the paint and the weathering get applied. It is at that point there where the outside portions will get their weathering to match the inside units. After all the paint and weathering is done, the masking is all removed and it leaves for a seamless appearance and everything it has the correct continuity. Moving our way to the rest of the rear hull detailing takes us to these components that are strewn out here on the table. All these parts are what's supplied with the Armor Tech kit in order to detail the rear portion of the vehicle. Now, for anyone that has been watching my other Armor Tech Tiger 1 videos, many of these components here will seem redundant as they are very similar in concept to the ones found on the other builds. Starting from left to right takes us to first the frame, which is used for that of the rear mud flap. The frame is made from laser cut steel plate. It's the same type of technique which was used on Armor Tech Tiger 1s all the way from the first generational version. Moving from there takes us to the toolbox. Now the toolbox here is comprised out of two pieces. First piece is made from laser cut steel which is pre-bent and shaped. And the second piece is the actual toolbox detailing, which is comprised out of a single aluminum CNC machine piece, which has all the detail found and present. The shelf looks to be more improved from the Generation 1 release, and the toolbox detailing itself is also very different as the original ones. This piece here was made from a white metal casting that was made from a rough 3D printed master. It's a much needed improvement compared to the Generation 1 release. Takes us further, takes us to the hinge fasteners. These components here are what secure these pieces to the rear of the hull and also act as the hinge point for that of the rear mud flap. Moving on, takes us to the tow hitch. The tow hitch itself is comprised of a single piece of CNC aluminum. It's very similar in design and spec to the other versions which have been on the Armor Tech kits, again from the Generation 1. Next we have the starter cover cap. This is made from a single piece of CNC aluminum and this again has been unchanged throughout all of the releases of the Armor Tech Tiger 1. Finally we have here the, the small little reflector mount. This piece here is made from a single piece of CNC aluminum. It's not a bad component. And this piece here is an improvement from the original gen the original releases, namely from Generation 1, which this was made of white metal castings. Like I said before, this piece here is workable. However, I will be replacing it with an aftermarket one, and I will be going over that in the upcoming scenes. Moving our way to the model's toolbox and toolbox holder, the toolbox holder is 
the kit supply version however it does have some mods made to it now on the kit supply version it is like i said before it's all made from a single piece of laser cut steel which is bent and shaped to the way you see it here to add the, some detailing to it that was absent on the stock unit i went ahead and soldered two sections of steel on the sides here as these would be present on the real units and i also soldered a piece of brass strip on the bottom portion and two small little handles the portion that's on the bottom and the handles were also present on the real one as well the reason for that is that rather than utilizing the kit supplied cnc aluminum detail for the toolbox i went ahead and used one of my resin ones now this unit here i've had on hand for a number of years and was just a spare casting went ahead and spray painted it black just for to act as a way as a primer and the piece will simply just get inserted directly to the armor tech shelf now what is going to be added after the unit here is primed is i'm going to take small little thin metal straps and add them to these sections here which will add the last of the detailing for that of the mounting straps once the straps are done the unit will then be mounted to the model like i said before the shelf itself is ready for primer and then we could then progress with the next step moving on to the rear reflector this is the stock unit that i was mentioned earlier now this unit like i said will not be utilized on this build instead i'll be utilizing the aftermarket component from steve winston the steve winston piece is very nicely done his contact email is listed below and I've used his components on many of the other armor tech builds that are found on this channel that have been built not only on this build in particular but also with many of the other German builds that I've done in the past the Winston component is made of all cast brass or bronze the reflector has its detailing present and it is an exquisitely detailed piece now the stock unit is not terrible like i said and in fact more likely this piece will be recycled and used on a number of my scratch built static tigers that i have lined up in the woodwork another bit of detail that gets added to the rear at this point is that of the rear starter plate now this is the plate that is stocked with the armor tech kit it consists of a solid piece of cnc aluminum the piece is very similar in specs to the first generation units as well as the other cnc units that followed from the first generation the unit is very similar they did make a little bit of a revision to the back portion here where it has this disc now present this was not present on the previous generations however i will not be utilizing this component and in its place i'll be utilizing one of my resin detail starter plates that i have here now on the eca catalog there are actually two versions of the same exact component the difference is being that one is for a late pattern tiger and this one here is the early pattern design. The late pattern features a different layout of many of the details and fittings that are found on the surface. Now in comparison to the stock unit, you will see that the stock armor tech one is very basic in its appearance compared to the ECA unit. Now one thing that does have to be changed in order to mount the ECA one to the tank is that of the faster location holes. On the stock armor tech kit that is facilitated by these two holes found on the top and the bottom. However on the real Tiger one the plate is actually fastened to the tank via these two locations right here and here. The purpose of these two locations on the real plate is actually for that of the starter electrodes that I have here found on the ECA resin casting. And here's the rear hull of the model, now with all of the details added and ready for ins the installation of the exhaust system. Now many of the equipment and detailing that was showcased earlier in this video has been mounted to the model at this point. This would include the tow hitch, the starter cover cap, the jack mounting racks, as well as also the rear mud flap mounts, the reflector, as well as the toolbox. In addition to the detailed components, the sculpted well beads have also been added to the appropriate locations at this point. It is also at this point here where you can see the completed toolbox now fitted to the model. Like what was showcased earlier, the toolbox was modified from the kit original somewhat. The original tray was repurposed and, and upgraded to have 
more better detailing compared to its stock version. And the actual toolbox itself was replaced with a resin version from ECA. Here I have in comparison the, uh, here we go. Here I have the original toolbox in comparison. Take it out of the plastic bag. Show the comparison between the ECA unit with the latches compared to the stock ArmorTech counterpart. Now, the stock ArmorTech piece can be repurposed and be improved compared to its stock original offering. However, rather than going through the the process to modify and redetail this component, I, it was simpler for me just to swap it out for the ECA unit. Moving our way to the opposite side of the hull takes us to the jack mounts. The jack mounts that you see here are the resin units from EastCoastArmory.com. The armor ticket does supply you with a basic set of metal and functional jack mounts. However, rather than utilizing those units as they're very basic in their overall detailing, I simply swap them out for the ECA units. The ECA units are a direct swap out for the armor tech piece and get mounted in the exact same locations. The only mod that I did was that of the sculpted well beads that are found around the base portion of the racks themselves. While on the jack mounting equipment takes us to this small little latch that we have here, which is going to be directly next to the heat shields and the FIFO canister tubes. The purpose of this latch here is for that of the of securing the handle found on the jack. Now this little feature here is not found on all early production Tigers, however it is found on Tiger 131. On the German jack, the ratcheting handle can actually tell, fold and collapse directly horizontal on top of the jack. However, if it's kept in the open state, can move around, and that's the purpose of this jack here. With the handle in the open state, you simply put it in its appropriate location, close the latch, and it secures it in place. Moving our way to the middle of the plate takes us to the mount for that of the cold weather starter plate. Like I showcased before, for the starter plate, I'll be utilizing the unit from ECA. And in order to use this unit, I had to modify the way the fasteners emerge from the hull. Now, like I said before on the stock armor tech kit, the fastener locations for the plate is in a manner which is not conducive for that of the real vehicle. To improve it, I simply deleted the original holes for the piece, and they have been flared in with the bodywork. And I went ahead then and drilled two new locations in the more appropriate spots for that of the starter plate. Now, if you notice, the pieces are threaded and emerge from the hull. This is as per the real vehicle. However, they are not threaded all the way through. Only the top portion is threaded and the bottom portion is that of a smooth lug. This is also as per the real vehicle. The purpose of the lugs is that they act as a stop and they prevent the, the starter plate from being mounted flush against the hull. If you look at a Tiger 1, you'll notice that there is a gap between the rear hull and that of the starter plate, and that is because of the design of these lugs. The starter plate itself will be fully completed shortly towards the end of this build. However, I can install it on this build at this point here, just to showcase it. The piece simply slides on, and then two fasteners go and lock it in place. And with the starter plate placed on top of its location, you can see how it has its appropriate standoff from the rear plate of the model. This is as per the real vehicle. Moving away to the lower portion of the rear takes us to the tow hitch. The tow hitch is the ArmorTech kit original unit and was utilized in its place. And from here, it kind of looks like a duck. But anyway, as for the piece itself, like I said before, it was the stock unit and was mounted as is. The only mod that I did make was that of the missing bottom portion here of the tow hitch. The German tow hitch has its bottom portion and it's secured by two fasteners. Now what's interesting to point out on the Tiger 1 is that on the bottom portion of the tow hitch the fastener hex heads are on the outside of the vehicle however on the two portions found on the top portion they're actually on the inside and it's reversed. The nuts are totally exposed on the top version of the tow hitch mount. This detailing was a simple feature to do and also greatly helps the accuracy of the build. Now to be added will be that of a tow pin which is a resin piece from ECA. Of course this will be added shortly later after the filming of this video. Directly above the tow hitch takes us to the starter cover plate. The starter cover plate is the stock armor tech unit and was simply mounted as is as the armor tech piece is basically exactly how it's supposed to be. The only addition that I made was that of a small little resin cone 
that I turned on the lathe and mounted it to the hex fastener as this fastener on the real German tank does have its cone present on the piece. It's a simple detail and once added, of course, improves it from leaving it as just a flush type of hex head fastener. Moving from the toe hitch and the cover cap takes us to the idler cover cap section. Now the only change that I made since the last video was that I went ahead and plugged up those two holes with that of epoxy in order to both have a more flush appearance with that of the hull and also to give a little bit more extra rigidity and strength to the fasteners themselves. This was done to both sides and is a mirror image of each other. Moving from the cover cap takes us to the reflector that I mentioned in a previous scene. This unit was simply mounted as is, and the only mod that I did was of course I taped up the lens to protect the detail lens portion from the painting processes. Of course, towards the end of this model's build, this will be removed, showing the beautiful red reflector that was present on the piece. Now one final bit of detailing that was added just prior to the whole back being covered in its base coat is that of these little bosses that we have here on the rear of the hull. The purpose of these bosses is for that of the mounts for the heat shields which are going to be added. The Tiger one, like I've mentioned in a few of the, my other videos, the heat shields are not directly making contact with the rear of the hull as what is seen on some other models that are on the market. In fact, the Tiger One's heat shields stand off from the hull in much the same way that the side skirts are mounted as well. These pieces of detailing are absent on the stock Armor Tech kit and were fabricated by myself. The pieces are made from plastruct quarter inch square plastic tubing and roll cut at the same size so that it's a nice even surface when the pieces get mounted. Now, if you notice, the pieces are simple square pieces of tubing and the real ones would be bosses where you would have a simple hole inside on the real piece which would be threaded in order to bolt down the fastener. Now that is not necessary for this build for the simple reason that once the heat shields get mounted on it covers up the square recess found in the component so filling them up with putty and drilling them out the quote unquote correct way is not necessary for this build as I frequently mentioned before. However if I was building this model with the heat shields off this would have to go through the the next refinement steps would of course be filling them in and drilling them out appropriately. However again with the heat shields present that's not going to be an issue and they're just going to be used to be that of a standoff from the hull just like on the real unit. Now it would be a nice feature if Armor Tech in the future were to include these with the bosses on future Tiger One builds as this bit of detailing here would really save a little bit of time for one and also would bump up the model's accuracy compared to leaving it with the flush mounting procedure. With the bosses added, it was then time for me to go ahead and paint the rear plate of the vehicle with the base coat. The reason for this is once these components get added, namely that of the smoke system equipment, getting access to these sections here with the recess is going to be very very difficult if not impossible of course like I frequently mention in other videos. So is that this opportunity here is when I go ahead and paint the component with that of the base coat and I also go ahead with the weathering and I airbrush the exhaust soot detailing again because once the pieces get added you're not going to be getting access into here with the airbrush to go ahead and add the appropriate weathering. It is at this point of the build where I could now go ahead and mount on the exhaust system equipment in layers, which is actually the way it is done on the real Tiger One. The first layer that's going to be mounted is that of the stacks themselves. Currently, you see I have the brass so kit supply fittings protruding out of the hull. The pieces simply get mounted in. However, a tap or two of a hammer may be necessary to get them fully seated in. As with both probably the tight tolerances of the hull and combined with, in my case, the layers of paint and primer made insertion of the piece by hand a little difficult. Again, a couple taps of the hammer and the pieces were fully seated in. Now, as for the actual threading on the piece themselves, like I showcased earlier on in the scene, or in the video for that matter, the fittings have a hex section pre seam seat into the brass. And as for a socket, the socket that I have on hand that fits is that of this 13 16 
hex socket. It's on a standard ratchet. And with this, I'll be go ahead and get the piece screwed in fully. As for the threads, like on everything on this build, is going to be held on with that of red thread lock. As well as I typically like to add a small little bead of silicone on the portion that the exhaust stack meets the hull just to seal it off and f which will focus and force all of the emitting exhaust smoke to funnel outward and with its full pressure without it seeping through the other section of the exhaust manifold. And here's the back with one of the stacks now fitted. As at this point here I'm going to install the second one. I already have the of Loctite on the fastener and I went ahead and have the silicone now on the piece. Now when it comes time to bolting it onto the tank you have to keep in mind that there is no indexing type slot or anything when it comes time to actually threading the piece on. So you have to visually keep the exhaust stacks as straight as possible otherwise when you're bolting them on they could be bolted on in a canted manner which is obviously less than ideal. Once the exhaust stacks are fitted, of course, the next component to be fitted is that of the exhaust armor cover. Now, this is another component that needs to be paid attention to with the installation, as you can easily install the component upside down, like I have it right here. There are no indexing holes, so the piece is reversible. However, not only is this incorrect, when it comes time to mounting on the exhaust shields, you're going to notice that you're not going to be able to fit it because of the protrusion of the lift lugs that we have here on either side. So care must be exhibited in the installation of these pieces. As for the fasteners themselves, the kit supply fasteners will be utilized. However, it is important to keep note that the exhaust covers themselves, the, the armor covers, the fasteners that are used on this piece here actually protrude outward from the rear plate as opposed to the opposite, which is just having the nut on the inside and the bolt head on the external. This is of course incorrect, as the real tank had lugs very similar to these over here for these locations for the armor covers. Once the armor covers are installed, of course the last step is the installation of the heat shields. Now the heat shields are a left and right hand specific set. They are not irreversible between the two. The way to tell them apart is with the cutout that we have here on the one side. The reason for this cutout is for clearance of that of the FIFL system that is going to be mounted on both of the sides shortly after the model progresses past this point. Now, what's interesting to point out is that even though the FIFL system was eventually dropped, the heat shield design was never changed, and even though Tigers such as late pattern tigers, which do not have any FIFO systems present, still have the exact same heat shields with the cutouts still present. Now, as for mounting them on the kit, the kit wants you to go ahead and mount the heat shields the same way you're supposed to mount on the armor covers, with the fasteners on the inside and nuts on the outside. Now, this is completely true and accurate, again, for the armor covers. However, not for the heat shields, because, again, the heat shields get mounted to these bosses that we have here. The kit wants you to use cap screws for the installation of these parts. However, because, again, of the detail that's going to be on the outside, I'm going to swap out the cap screws for that of hex head fasteners, as the hex bolts would be more accurate for having the pieces on the outside. Now, like I said before, here goes the fasteners on the inside portion of the hull for that of the armor covers. The heat shields, the kit wants you to do the same type of procedure. However, because of this type of design, when it comes to the top row of fasteners that we have here, the kit wants you to use countersunk fasteners. The purpose for that has to do with that of the rear deck that needs to be mounted in this section here, and so you can't have any of the fastener heads protruding. Now, because I'm swapping out the kit design way for the reverse way to have the nuts on the inside portion of the model, the countersunk wells need to be drilled out deeper. The reason for that has to do with where it needs the extra clearance for that of the actual nut so that the nut does not protrude from this side here, which will cause interference with that of the top deck. Now to do this, I went ahead and bored out these two sections here with that of a quarter inch drill bit. Now luckily the plate is nice and thick, so you can bore out about a quarter inch or even an eighth of an inch into the aluminum and it's not going to cause any issues with weakness of the metal.
You have to be careful while doing this though, because you can easily over drill and pop out through the other end, which will lead to some serious issues, and now you have some big problems to worry about. And here's the rear plate now with one of the heat shields fitted. As you can see, the heat shield has a nice standoff from the rear plate that I was referring to earlier. And on the inside portion here, we can see how the countersunks, which were bored out, now have the fastener sunk into the metal plate. Now, if there are currently some threaded sections protruding from the plate, these will simply be deleted and cut away with that of a Dremel and a cutting stone. I will now do the same installation to the opposite side, and then from there cut off the remainder of the little fasteners. With this detailing now out of the way, the build can now progress to the next step, which will be focusing in on the interior portion here of the hull, which will be that of the fan compartments, as well as the other equipment, which is going to be fitted to this model. All of that information will be discussed in more detail in the next video update. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1.6 scale ArmorTech early production German Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook, where there are more photographs of this build that have been posted, as well as the other builds that have been showcased on the ECA channel. In addition to that, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detailed components. Thanks for watching.